Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay, and Palm Olive Shave Creams for a smoother, more comfortable way to shave, bring you Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden. <laughs> Time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks under the direction of Al Lewis. Well, in the daily life of Our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, teaching itself only takes up a portion of her time. This leaves a number of free hours each day to pursue an outside interest. But it doesn't leave quite enough free hours, especially since my outside interest refuses to stand still long enough for me to drop a net over him. <laughs> In fact, lately, I've even considered taking up another outside activity besides Mr. Boynton. Like the one my landlady began recently. Mrs. Davis was quite reticent about her hobby until last Wednesday morning at breakfast when she gave me a broad hint. Notice anything different about the table this morning, Connie? Well, the big cat's abstain in front of my place is gone. <laughs> it's under your egg cup, dear <laughs> Yes, again Oh, of course The big bowl of apples in the center What a delicious display mm. I'm glad you like it, Connie It's a hat <laughs> <laughs> Who designed it? William Tell? <laughs> no, I did you probably don't know this, but years ago, I used to design hats like mad. Why, you mad hat are you? <laughs> I never would have suspected. You seem so normal in some other respects. <laughs> well, I haven't had the yen in years. But last week, my brother Victor sent me some samples of the material his firm makes. And you know my brother Victor, don't you? I've heard you speak of him quite often. <laughs> He's a peculiar man, Victor. Rather a slow-moving type of fellow, but once he gets interested in something, he follows right through. The last couple of years, he's been up to his ears in plastics. No wonder he's slow-moving. <laughs> but what has plastic got to do with your designing hats again? That's what they're made of. I'll bet you never even noticed that this is really two hats in one. Two in one? Yes. Worn this way, it looks like a bowl of apples. But when you turn it around like this, it's a sparrow. <laughs> well, what a novel idea. If you're out with a man you like, you tempt him with an apple. And if your date is a drip, he gets the bird. <laughs> I've got four of them all made up so far. They should be easy to sell with Mother's Day coming this Sunday. Well, I don't know, Mrs. Davis. They're a bit unusual for popular consumption, I'm afraid. Not if they're presented right, Connie. And that's where you come in. I want you to help me sell them at school. Me? Yes. If you sell all four of them, I'll de de deduct half of the back rent you owe me. Oh. And it shouldn't be difficult to sell them. It isn't as if they were hard to move. Not if the wind is right. <laughs> of course, if I could reduce my debt to you, that... Oh, that must be Walter Denton. He's driving me down to school. Come on in, Walter. Try to sell him one for his mother, Connie. I'll get into the kitchen and rustle up some goodies for Walter's inner man. Better get some for his outer man, too. <laughs> Greetings to the brightest star in the scholastic firmament. <laughs> early for me to twinkle, Walter, but sit down. You're going to have a bit of breakfast with us, aren't you? Well, I might be persuaded to partake of a wee morsel if you coax me. <laughs> and if I don't coax you? You couldn't be that cruel. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. What'll it be? French toast? Eggs? Griddle cake? Fine. <laughs> Mrs. Davis? Yes, Connie? Walter's here. Vacuum the kitchen and bring in the bag. <laughs> I'll eat up a giant omelet for him, dear. He's the little giant that can eat it. You know, I don't know what's happening at home, but my mother just doesn't seem to be making the breakfast she used to. Well, maybe she's just worn out. Well, she does cook an awful lot of meals for us. Of course she does, Walter. And while we're on the subject, how much thought have you given to her Mother's Day gift? Oh, quite a bit. And I've come up with something that should show her how grateful I am for all she's done for me. I'm going to get her a present that'll make her forget the many menial and arduous tasks 
she performs in my behalf. What's the present? A bottle of sweet air for the kitchen. <laughs> what do you think of the idea, Miss Brooks? It smells. <laughs> I mean, it smells very pleasant. Of course, I'd like to get her something else, too, but... On my allowance, unless my dad chips in, I couldn't afford much. Walter, I have a suggestion for a gift that your dad will be happy to chip in for. Just look at the center of this table. Holy cow, is it alive? <laughs> Certainly not. It happens to be a woman's hat. A woman's hat? <laughs> I'm wearing it to school this morning. Say, that'd make a wonderful decoration for our dining room table at home. A mother always likes to have something gay and colorful in the center of the table. That's what I say. It would make a wonderful decoration for your dining room table at home. Wait up a minute, Miss Brooks. Who's that? It's me, Tex Barton. Howdy, ma'am. Howdy, Tex. <laughs> you see me in a hurry, ma'am. Why, when I flagged you, you was barreling across this campus like a doggie that just smelled a branding iron. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not that bad. Although I do have to see Mr. Conklin before class. Well, I... Glory be to Sam Houston... And hallelujah to Dave Dallas. What's up? <laughs> Miss Brooks, have you any idea of the activity that's going on up there in the upper regions of your anatomy? What? Skin me for a lizard if there ain't a sparrow eating apples off in your skull. <laughs> well, now, calm down, Tex. This is just a new style of hat. A hat? Well, you could have fooled me. By the way, Mother's Day is just around the corner. Have you decided on a gift for your mother yet? Well, I've been thinking a lot about that, Miss Brooks, but it's kind of tough to figure out what it please, Mom. Maybe I can help you. Well, I doubt it, ma'am. For Christmas, Pa and I got her some brand new riding boots and stirrups. And for her birthday, we got her a pair of chaps and a Stetson. Uh, and for Easter, uh, we decked her out in a spanking new box of saddle soap. <laughs> so, you see, she's got just about everything a normal woman needs. A normal woman who's competing in a rodeo, you mean <laughs> Look, Tex, a hat like the one I'm wearing would make a lovely gift And it's only ten dollars It sure is flashy, Miss Brooks And Pa and I could afford that much But there's a couple of things that have to be done to it first For instance? Well, do you think you could make two holes in it? Holes? Yeah, uh-huh so as her ears could come through. <laughs> so her ears could come through. Tex, your mother must have a very low forehead. Well, I wouldn't give it to my mother, Miss Brooks. I'd just be getting it for my mother to give to Lucy. Lucy? She's our horse. <laughs> she sure will look beautiful in it. I'm sure she will, Tex. You can pick up the hat at Mrs. Davis's today. Today? When would be a good time, ma'am? The same time you leave the ten dollars. But, Daddy, please be reasonable. There isn't time for me to pick out your Mother's Day gear. I didn't ask you into my office to argue, Harriet. I should think you'd want to see your mother receive a nice present. I do, Daddy. And I'm getting her one with most of my allowance. But your gift to her is something else again. She always expects something outstanding. Well, obviously, my dear, she married me, didn't she? <laughs> yes, but about other things, she's pretty particular. <laughs> I mean, well, I wouldn't mind selecting something for you, but you always insist that I find a bargain. There's nothing wrong with being frugal, Harriet. It's a bit... Come in. Good morning, Mr. Conklin. Hello, Harriet. Hi, Miss Brooks. Hello, Miss... Good grief! Something has alighted on your hair. <laughs> but, Mr. Conklin... Don't Mrs... stand there, Harriet. Get a net. <laughs> Maybe we can trap it for our nature study group. It happened. 
happens to be a hat, Mr. Conklin. It's oh. very exciting, Miss Brooks. Now, if you'll excuse me, Daddy. Very I'll... well, but I'll talk to you later, Miss Important. Bye, Miss Brooks. <laughs> Mr. Conklin, knowing how fond of brevity you are, I'll come right to the point of my visit. Sunday is Mother's Day. How would you like to buy a hat like this for Mrs. Conklin? For Mrs. Conklin? Yes, don't you think she deserves something like this? Well, she has been a source of great irritation on occasion. <laughs> no, no, I'm not interested, Miss Brooks. If I can sell one of these hats, it will help get me out of debt, Mr. Conklin. Besides, it's a real bargain. I'm sorry, I'm definitely not in the... Did you say a bargain, Miss Brooks? <laughs> yes, sir, much cheaper than you can get it on the open market. Where did you get it? Let's just say I have access, Mr. Conklin. These hats aren't hot, are they? <laughs> Hottest thing in town. Oh, you mean stolen. No, sir, they're not stolen. Although you could call them a steal at $10 each. $10? For a few apples and a small sparrow? <laughs> it's evident, Mr. Conklin, that you haven't heard how meat and fruit have gone up. <laughs> But think of how exclusive this hat is. Well, for my wife, it would have to be Miss Brooks. She has an absolute fanatic uh, 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 approach and uh, on individualized apparel. She wouldn't be caught dead in anything that even resembled what someone else was wearing. Mr. Conklin, when it comes to this hat, I give you my unqualified guarantee. You do? Absolutely. Believe me, she won't be caught dead in it. <laughs> Brush your teeth with Colgate. Colgate Dental Cream. It cleans your breath. What a toothpaste. While it cleans your teeth. Colgate toothpaste. Cleans your breath. What a toothpaste. While it cleans your teeth. Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. And the Colgate way stops tooth decay best. Yes, the Colgate way is the most thoroughly proved and accepted home method of oral hygiene known today. Over two years' research showed brushing teeth right after eating with Colgate Dental Cream helps stop more decay for more people than ever before reported in dentifrice history. The Colgate way stopped tooth decay best. No other dentifrice, ammoniated or not, offers such conclusive proof. And you should know that Colgate's, while not mentioned by name, was the only toothpaste used in the research on tooth decay recently reported in Reader's Digest. So always follow the Colgate way to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. And stop tooth decay best. Brush your teeth with Colgate. Colgate Dental Cream. It cleans your breath. What a toothpaste. What it cleans your teeth. And the Colgate way stops tooth decay best. Well, by the time I was to meet Mr. Boynton at lunch, I had sold three of the four hats Mrs. Davis had made up. One to Walter Denton for his mother to be used as a table centerpiece. One to Tex Barton for his horse to be used as an eye shade. And one to Mr. Conklin for his wife to be used, of all things, as a hat. <laughs> I had the sample hat on when Mr. Boynton came over to our table. Hello, Miss Brooks. Sorry I'm late. I couldn't get here any sooner. That's all right, Mr. Boynton. Put down your tray. Thank you. Notice anything different about me today? Different? Let's see. Well, for heaven's sake, I, I apologize for being late. You oughtn't to go to such lengths to chide me about it. To chide you? Well, yes, after all, this is a public eating place. You shouldn't balance your dessert on your head. <laughs> Boynton, this happens to be a hat. <laughs> I'm sorry, Miss Brooks. I'm afraid I dropped my cutlery. You should be more careful, Mr. Boynton. <laughs> that knife might have dented your meatloaf. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sorry I frightened you so. Oh, I, I should be used to sights like this. When I was a kid, my mother always had some fantastic creations around the house. Really? How many brothers and sisters did you have? <laughs> oh, you mean hats. 
Well, may I remind you, Mr. Boynton, that Mother's Day will soon be with us? Well, so will my mother. <laughs> yes, she's coming down this afternoon to stay through the weekend. Unfortunately, Dad has to stay home on business, but Mom and I are going to have a high old time. Have you made all of your plans for celebrating the holiday, Mr. Boynton? Yes, indeed. Oh, it's, it's going to be one mad world for the both of us. I've got a four-day itinerary all mapped out. Oh, what are you going to do? Well, on Thursday, I thought I'd show Mom the new wing of our public library. Friday, we'll, we'll do the Museum of Natural History, and, and Saturday, we'll have a go at the Botanical Gardens. Wow. Well, there's not going to be any let-up in the evenings, either. If we're not playing chess or checkers, I'll whip out the old domino set. <laughs> now, by the way, can you think of anything that might add to the merriment, Miss Brooks? Yes, but I think the morgue is closed on weekends. <laughs> Uh, that is, I do have a suggestion that might be quite a surprise for your mother. Oh, what is it? Why don't you get her a nice hat? You said yourself that she used to like unique hats. Uh, I'm sorry, Miss Brooks. I'm not interested. Oh, that's too bad, Mr. Boynton. It's a real bargain. Well, I'd like to get her something, of course, but this is just out of... Did you say a bargain? <laughs> Never misses. <laughs> Where did you get the hat, Miss Brooks? The truth is I'm disposing of them for Mrs. Davis. They're only $10 apiece. <laughs> $10 apiece? Get your jaw out of the potatoes and I'll make it... <laughs> I, I guess we could arrive at some sort of a deal, Miss Brooks, but there's one thing of which I, I must be certain. What's that? Well, that my mother doesn't see any other woman wearing a hat like it. Mom's a fanatic on individualized apparel. I'll sell her the very one I'm modeling today, Mr. Boynton. Bring her over to my place about 8.30 tonight, and we'll surprise her with it. All right, but you're sure now that she'll be the only woman to have this particular hat? While she's in town, your mother will be the only woman seen wearing this particular hat. Good. <laughs> well, I'm going to get myself some, some dessert now, Miss Brooks. Uh, would you like me to bring something back for you? Yes, I would, Mr. Boynton. I'd like a Coke. The five-cent size will do. Very well. That's all I want right now, Mr. Boynton. Okay. <laughs> oh, here. <laughs> Thanks. I'll just be a minute, Miss Brooks. <laughs> Take your time, sporty. <laughs> Somebody's got to teach him that money isn't everything, especially my money. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, hello, Miss Brooks. I thought I'd find you here. May I speak with you for a moment? Oh, of course, Mr. Conklin. Oh, thank you, thank you. Now, about that hat I agreed to buy for my wife, I want it to be a complete surprise. She mustn't see it until Sunday. I'll say she mustn't. I mean, it, it wouldn't be a surprise if she did. Now, there's one important factor we overlooked in our discussion this morning, Miss Brooks. I neglected to give you my wife's measurements. Well, I'll take them right now. How far apart are your wife's ears? <laughs> far apart are her ears? Sorry, that was another customer. <laughs> what is her head size? Well, I don't know, but I'll find out this afternoon and check with you at home this evening. Uh, what would be a good time? After midnight. That is, <laughs> any time, sir, any time at all. Now, you must have many more important things to do, and I'll be happy to excuse you, sir. If you really have to dash away, I know how those things are. I've had things to do myself. Uh, I'm Ms. expecting Ms. someone... Mr. Brooks, <laughs> I don't quite comprehend this conversational St. Vitus dance you're indulging in. But if you're always this nervous during mealtime, it's a wonder you haven't got an ulcer. Oh, I had an ulcer, Mr. Conklin. I had a nice big one two years after I began teaching school. You did? How did you get rid of it? I just couldn't afford to keep it. <laughs> I don't know what you're so jittery about, Connie. Everything's gone swimmingly so far. 
Walter Denton picked up the hat for his mother during the lunch period. I know, Mrs. Davis. And Tex but... Barton came over right after school to get the specially prepared one you phoned me about. My goodness, but his mother must have long ears. <laughs> you want to see his mother's mane. I mean, those aren't the ones I'm jittery about. It's Mr. Conklin and Mr. Boynton. I promised them both that they were buying a completely original creation. Well, they are that, Connie. The fact that they're identical shouldn't bother you. After all, Mrs. Boynton will be leaving town right after Mother's Day. Yes, but Mr. Boynton's bringing her here tonight to pick it up, and Mr. Conklin will want his wife's hat as soon as he gives me her measurements. But if he runs into Mrs. Boynton anywhere before Sunday... Now, now, calm down, dear, calm down. When do you expect the Boynton? No! <laughs> now. Uh, well, I'll go make some tea and you let them in. Mrs. Boynton's hat is right on the hall table, Connie. Thanks. Well, here we are, Miss Brooks. You remember my mother. I'll never forget her. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Boynton. Come in for a second. How are you, Connie? It's been ages since I've seen you. Oh, Mom couldn't wait to see her surprise, Miss Brooks. Oh, then I'll get it for her right away. Meanwhile, just help yourself to some fruit on this hall table. That is, as soon as the sparrow gets through helping himself. <laughs> that is, here's your new hat. How do you like it? Well, it's certainly different. Oh, I knew you'd love it. Well, now that you've seen it, I don't want to keep you and Mr. Boynton another minute. You must have lots to talk over, so don't stand on ceremonies. Just toddle right along, and I'll see you later in the week. Bye! We're really in no great rush, Miss Brooks. Uh, as a matter of fact, <laughs> Philip suggested that we might spend the evening with you. Oops! <laughs> I told Mom you'd jump at the idea. <laughs> I thought we'd play a few games of checkers, Connie. I'll never forget how exciting it was the last time we played. There was one crowning after another. You ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> but I'm afraid I can't ask you to stay for checkers, Mrs. Boynton. Mrs. Davis has a splitting headache. But, Miss Brooks, how could a game of checkers disturb Mrs. Davis? Please, Mr. Boynton, if you were lying down with a headache, how would you like to hear someone constantly jumping in the next room? <laughs> now, you'll just excuse me. Well, that's the doorbell, isn't it? Maybe Miss Brooks has another engagement, Philip. Perhaps we'd better be leaving. I wouldn't think of letting you budge from this house. Mr. Boynton, I insist that you take your mother into the living room and let her try on her checkerboard, a fruit bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Here, take it with you, dear. There's a wonderful mirror near the piano. Well, if you're sure. Never been surer. Go along, Mr. Boynton. Oh, very well. It's right this way, Mother. Hi, Miss Brooks. Walter, what are you doing here? It's 12 hours until breakfast. <laughs> no. I have to bring the hat back, Miss Brooks. Aren't you going to ask me in? Not if I can help it. <laughs> well, only be a minute. It's important. All right, but please hurry. What's the trouble, Walter? Well, I showed my dad this hat you sold us for a centerpiece, Miss Brooks. And he didn't like it? Well, he's crazy about it. But he wants a slight change made. He says if you'll wire it up so we can use it as a lamp, he'll give you an extra $3. <laughs> He'll make it five dollars. I'll put in a motor and he can drive it to work. <laughs> Get into the dining room immediately. Take the hat with you quick. Yeah, but Mr. I'll explain later. Get going. Okay, but I wish I knew what was happening around here. Good evening, Miss Brooks. Well, I've got my wife's head measurements on this sheet of paper. Thanks, Mr. Conklin. Good night. <laughs> Just, just a moment. There are a few things I have to tell you. Yes, sir. Come in. Thank you. I got these measurements from the milliner with whom my wife does quite a large business. She's oh, been going pardon me, but number of... uh, Mom would like a drink of water. Oh, hello, Mr. Conklin. Oh, hello, Walter. Oh. I'll get it myself if you'll just tell me... Oh, I didn't know someone was with you, Connie. Oh, there isn't. It's just Mr. Conklin. <laughs> this is Mrs. Boynton, Mr. Conklin. How do you do, Mrs. What is she doing with my wife's hat on her head? <laughs> Your wife's hat, Mr. Conklin? Philip, 
You didn't buy me the same hat Mr. Conklin bought for his wife, did you? Oh, I didn't intend to, Mother. Miss Brooks, what seems to have happened? Shouldn't happen to a sparrow. <laughs> Look, folks, there's been a slight mix-up, but I'm sure it'll come out all right by Mother's Day. After all, there are only two of you wearing the hats, and you won't be seen together any place. Well, that's true enough. You do have a point there. There's no air in that dining room, Miss Brooks. I... Oh, I didn't know you had company. Oh, this is Walter Denton, one of our pupils, Mother. Walter, this is my mother. Glad to know you, Walter. Same here, Mrs. Boynton. I... Say, what are you doing with my mother's centerpiece on your head? <laughs> your mother's centerpiece, Denton? Oh, hello, Mr. Conklin. Yeah, my dad and I are going to have it changed into a lamp before we give it to her, though. See, we'll put the wire right through here, and then we'll take... So, Miss Brooks, my wife and Mrs. Boynton are the only two people with these original creations. I'd give a lot to know just who else is wearing these assembly line special... Oh, dear. Who is it? <laughs> What is that? <laughs> it, it sounded like a horse. That's just what it is, our milkman's horse. You see, the milkman is sick, so the horse is making the rounds alone. <laughs> Don't scream today, Lucy. <laughs> She's very clever. She must be, to ring the doorbell by herself. <laughs> Miss Brooks, open the door. Yes, sir. Howdy, Miss Brooks. Lucy and I were just eloping by, so I thought I'd show you how nice she looks in her new bonnet. But, Tex, Tex, you shouldn't have brought her right up to the front door like this. <laughs> what is going on here? Why is this beast sticking her head... Oh, God! wearing my wife's hat. And my mother's hat. You mean they got the same hat she sold me for Lucy, Miss Brooks? Yes, Tex, but it's... Shucks, if I'd have known that, I'd have never bought it. Lucy's a, a fanatic, fanatic on, on individualized apparel, apparel, I know. <laughs> Miss Brooks, just what do you propose to do about these hats? I'm going to take them out to our backyard and put them up in a tree. A tree? Yes, these hats are strictly for the birds. Steve <laughs> Barton returns in just a moment. Now, the case of the close scrape featuring Arthur Griffin, mail carrier. Here's what Mr. Griffin told us. Listen. Here's exactly what happened. Shaving was just one close scrape after another for me, and then I discovered Palm Olive Lather Shave Cream and a new, different way to shave. Palm Olive's oceans of rich, thick lather ended my worries about scrapes, burns, and nicks. Why, even in cold or hard water, that Palm Olive Lather way is super smooth, super comfortable. Take Arthur Griffin's advice, men. The new Palm Olive Lather way gets beards really soft, and it provides a protective film that actually float your razor's cutting edge. You get a clean, close shave every time without worry about scraping or nicking, even in cold or hard water. Arthur Griffin and 1,200 other men tested palm olive lather cream following package directions, and three out of four reported smoother, more comfortable shaves the palm olive shave cream way. No matter how they shaved before, better get palm olive lather shave cream. Remember, even in cold or hard water, the palm olive lather way means smoother, more comfortable shaves. Now, once again, here is Eve Arden. What would you do to protect your family and yourself in case of a sudden atom bomb attack? It may never happen, but it could. Remember, you can survive an atom bomb attack if you know what to do. Get a copy of the official air raid instructions from your local civil defense organization. Or write to Superintendent of Documents, Washington, D.C., and closing five cents in coin or stamps. Learn the instructions by heart and see that everyone in your family does, too. 
Be smart, be prepared. This is Warren Smith reminding you to tune in next week to another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Palmolive Shave Cream, for a smoother, more comfortable way to shave, and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring E. Barden, is produced by Larry Burns, written by Al Lewis and Arthur Allsberg, with the music of Wilbur Hatch. <laughs> Listen to this. With Marvellous Vell, V-E-L, you can save 90% of dishwashing work. A quick soak in Vell suds gets dishes and glassware shiny clean. Even if a bit of food should cling, a touch with a dishcloth gets rid of it fast. Yes, Vell's activated suds lift off and carry away food and grease. So all dishes need is a quick rinse and they dry sparkling without washing or wiping. All pots and pans need is a soaking with Vell suds. Then you can wash them shiny clean without hard scouring. What's more, Vell is a miracle of mildness. So get new Vell. Save 90% of dishwashing work. Our Miss Brooks came to you transcribed.